Hi everyone, my name is Hairnisa Anginaldi and on this video, we will present our experiment about sound wave and the instrument that we will use is kalimba. Before that, we want to say our biggest thanks to Miss Fitri Wulandari who already teach us so many things about these materials. And now, let's go to the video. Oh, before that, we will put a video here of a person playing kalimba. instrument is called kalimba. I'm sure you guys have seen kalimba before. Maybe you saw people playing with kalimba in social media such as YouTube, Instagram, or Twitter. In physics, all musical instrument is the application of sound wave concept. They create a sound by causing matter to vibrate. The vibration will travel across the particle, like the air. Then it's sensed by the receiver, like human ear. That is why we can hear every sound in our daily life. Mostly, for the modern kalimbas use the stainless steel for the times. It's all the same, but each time makes the different sounds or the different notes. As a result, we can hear incredible sound coming from the kalimba. But how is that really happened? Even though they have the same times, but they could make the different notes. Maybe it's because people are just so talented to play with the kalimba so we can enjoy the music. Is that really the reason? Well, in fact, that is not the reason. If we connect this with sound wave concepts, it's actually related to its frequency, wavelength, and the different length of times. For that reason, my friends are going to discuss with you so you all can understand why and how is it possible for us to hear the different sound coming from each time. After this, my friends, uh, Ernest, in short, will show you the concept of Kalimba. So hello guys, it's Ernest here, and I'm gonna show you and tell you how does this magical, cute instrument works. Before we start, I will talk about the mechanism behind Kalimba. I will show you first about the parts of Kalimba. You may notice this big flat boards here. This is the board of Kalimba. Some kalimba have flat board like this, and some of them have a boxed one. There are also some small parts of kalimba here. The curved wood, it's called the backstop. And this is the zip bracket, and this is the bridge. And this, like, a metal thing here, we can call it tines. This is what produces sound in kalimba. Now come the first question. How could it produce sound? Well, we know sound is a longitudinal wave, hence it's formed by vibration. This time here, when we pluck it, see, sound. As we pluck, the time is vibrating. Let me focus it. That. Thus, it vibrates the air around it. Let's try another time. Maybe this one. Ooh, different sound. How could it be? You may see on your screen that this kalimba have some tines. This tines is at different length. Let's play some again. Hmm. Okay, another one. Whoa, another one. Can you give a conclusion from this experiment?
Yes, different length, different note. The shorter the tone is, the higher frequency it produces. Do you, do you agree? See? What is it? Let's hear what Rayana would say about this. Hello everyone, I'm Rayana, and in this part I'm going to show you the result of the experiment. Um, we decided to show it with two ways. The first one is with table, and the second one is with graph. For table of experiment, uh, the notes itself we start from B major, and for calculation, the velocity we use 343 meter per second. As the table shown, the higher frequency achieved by the shorter of tines, this may due to the pressure applied. Shorter length means fewer area to receive the force, hence more vibration. For the graph itself, we use two kind of graph. The first one, it shows correlation between frequency and wavelength. And the second one, it shows correlation between frequency and the length of kalimba. Based on the result, we conclude that the longer the times, the smaller the frequency. Vice versa, the shorter the times, the larger the frequency. This is one of a kind example from Marcin's law. As what have been stated by Marcin on his law that frequency is directly proportional to force and frequency is inversely proportional to area, length, and roots of density. That is why the length differences will surely affect the frequency. Moreover, each time will be sounding different because of it. The length of times will affect the frequency. The smaller the times, the larger the frequency. The longer the times, the smaller the frequency. Other than that, the area of music instrument also will affect the frequency. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello everyone, my name is Dia Safarasawa. In this part, I want to explain about the problem formulation and also the explanation of it. So, let's start. So, we have two problem formulation in here. And the first one is why does the kalimba can produce different sound from each time? And then the second one, um, does the length of the kalimba can affect the frequency and why? So I want to answer those questions based on the result that we got. Okay, conclude that the longer of the times, then the smaller of the frequency. Meanwhile, the shorter of the times, it becomes a larger frequency. As what have been stated by Marcini on his laws, that the frequency is directly proportional to the force. Meanwhile, it's inversely proportional to the length area and also the root of the density okay that's it for my explanation thank you well thank you to all of my dearest friends who already explained about the experiment in this video and shout out to you all who already watched this video we hope you guys could learn from our video thank you and goodbye